As the coronavirus outbreak continues, two very contrasting statistics from different parts of the world. For the first time since COVID-19 took hold in China, there have been no new domestic cases. But Italy, the worst affected country in Europe, reported the highest number of deaths from the disease in a single day across any country. It's a grim record and it's been accompanied by pleas by doctors for staff and ventilators. And a warning by the worst hit region, Lombardy, services really are at breaking point. And we have some breaking news in the past hour or so from Spain. The death toll there has soared by 209 to 767 fatalities. That is a 30% jump in 24 hours. Spain is currently on lockdown. This was the eerily quiet streets in Madrid today as the virus continues to spread through the country. The number of cases are jumping there, highlighting the job the country has on its hands now to control the virus. Over 17,000 people infected. But that is something that China seems to have managed to do. The latest official bulletin confirming no new domestic cases in China. That is the first time that has happened since Beijing started keeping records. There are 34 additional infections and people arriving into the country from abroad, though. It's all leading to scenes like this one. These are incredible pictures from China. These are medics, teams who were deployed to Wuhan and they're being told they can go home. There are still cases under treatment. There were eight new deaths in China in the last 24 hours. That is a huge drop, though, in the figures from the peak of the infection. In Hubei, yesterday there is no new confirmed case and no increased suspected case and no remaining suspected cases. We haven't seen this for a while, but our correspondent Steve McDonald managed to go outside of the bureau in Beijing and he says this is a highly symbolic day for the country. The first time we've had zero homegrown infections in all of China since this emergency began. And as if to sort of really nail this home, people in Wuhan, the city where this crisis began, have finally been allowed to go outdoors so you've been cooped up in your house for six weeks like a month and a half imagine what today is like to be able to go with your family to go outside and have a bit of a stroll breathe some fresh air in they're not allowed to go that far from their homes and it's a staggered approach so they're sort of releasing people in building by building sort of level by level however a big change to being cooped up you know sitting around in front of the television all day now that doesn't mean that the problem is all over here by a long shot. We still have these additional cases in the form of people arriving from overseas. 34 new cases. Most of those are in Beijing, in fact. And a lot of these are Chinese people returning home from North America and Europe, believing that this is now, this is the safe place to be. And for that reason, the Beijing government even issued a sort of statement saying that all these Chinese students studying overseas, unless you have a good reason to, you shouldn't come back. So they're already trying to tell people they don't want them flooding back into the country because everything's kind of under control now. And imagine there have been cases of people with coronavirus symptoms who've boarded planes, they've taken drugs to suppress the conditions. So it, it seems like they're all right. They arrive in Beijing, somebody gives them a proper test and they have the coronavirus. Now imagine that, Again, you could be infecting everybody on that flight. You're in a crowded airport, more infections. And that's why in big Chinese cities, there are still these very strict quarantine rules. Steve McDonald there in Beijing and that real spirit of optimism in China today. It couldn't be more different in Italy. Uh, let's just update you on what is happening there. The country recording 475 deaths from coronavirus in just 24 hours. That is the biggest daily number recorded in any country, including China. The city of Bergamo, one of the worst affected cities, has run out of space in its morgues and crematoriums. Look uh, at these coffins. They are being lined up. This is actually inside a chapel because they had run out of space. And these pictures as well of military vehicles, they are taking these coffins away to other cities in Italy to be cremated because of the amount of deaths there has been. Well, let's hear from a doctor working in Bergamo in northern Italy. Stefano Faguli is a senior doctor at the Pope Giovanni Hospital, and he has issued this plea for help. 
we are in full emergency with this coronavirus pandemia. Our health personnel, nurses and physicians are working round the clock countless hours to fight this incredible situation. We do not know how long this pandemia will last. I have two messages. The first one is for the general population. Please stay at home. The second message is for whoever wants to help us. We are in desperate need of both nurses and physicians, together with ventilators and dispositives for protection. So a real plea for help. Uh, we are hearing the medical services in northern Italy. They are completely on their knees, all of those health workers there. So let's bring you more with the BBC's Sima Kotecha, who joins us now from Rome. And we all recognise that site, Sima. St Peter's behind you. But I don't think I've ever seen it like that on a beautiful day. No one is there. Give us a sense of the atmosphere in Rome at the moment. Well, yes, it is an incredibly bright day, but the mood doesn't correlate to the weather. As you say, that's St Peter's Square over there. That's where the Pope lives, eerily quiet. It's been barricaded off. And if we move around here, the road behind me leads to the city centre. Again, eerily quiet. And at the end of the road, there's some soldiers guarding it so that people can't get through. A crucial day here for Italy. More than 3,000, sorry, just under 3,000 people have died over the last 24 hours. But when when the figures come out tonight at 6 p.m. local time, as they do every day, eyes will be on them because if a few hundred more die today, like they've been doing over the last few days, the Italian death toll will be higher than the total death toll from this virus in China. So a big moment for Italy, an incredibly sad moment for this country that is at the moment dealing with this outbreak. The North particularly bad, hospitals struggling to cope. They're running out of key equipment, as you heard from that doctor there. Ventilators and face masks are desperately needed. And the Prime Minister has said that the stringent measures that have been in place over the last 10 days or so could be made more strict to stop this outbreak from spreading. So people at the moment can walk around if they've got a dog or want to go to the shops to get some groceries. But there is a chance that even just popping out for those few minutes could be banned too. So Italy on full alert. And like I said, I can't emphasise enough how the world and Italy will be watching these figures to see where its place is in that awful death toll table. Seema, we saw these really poignant pictures a moment ago of military vehicles taking coffins away from the north because they simply can't deal with the amount of bodies there. How is the rest of the country preparing? Are they bracing themselves for perhaps something similar happening in other regions? Well, some mortuaries in the north are being used to store coffins. It's a incredibly sad uh, description there and I've been reading about it today and it's really heartbreaking in terms of the rest of the country well as we know that most of the deaths like for example that happened overnight 300 or so of those deaths were in the north so the big chunk of them are happening up there there is a real deep-rooted concern that that spread could move from the north to the south because in recent weeks tens of thousands of people have been making that journey from the north to the south so there is concern that the hospitals in the south, the more poorer part of the country, are not going to be able to cope. I mean, they don't have enough equipment as it is. Uh, and if an outbreak were like, like the one in the north were to move down there, well, then who knows how they will actually treat people um, of all ages. A lot of old people um, are catching this illness in the north. 70% of them are men. The oldest person to have got it is 95. The youngest, 39. So... Um, as I say, a real sense of anxiety and frustration here 10 days on after the measures were first implemented. Oh, there absolutely is, Seema. Thank you so much for joining us from central Rome there. And what a contrast, the beautiful blue skies, spring day, and that stunning part of Rome and heartbreak right across the country as they deal with this pandemic, the health system there on its knees.